This video is all about how formal charge can be misleading sometimes. We need to be on the lookout for situations where formal charge does not always accurately tell us where the electrons are in a molecule. And I've drawn out this little example here. We've got H3O plus, which is, as we know, a strong acid. And we've got OH minus, which is a base. And knowing that, as we do, that opposite charges attract and like charges repel, some students' first instinct, and this is very common, might be to think that the oxygen negative charge is going to be attracted to the positive charge, which is on the oxygen, right? Negative goes to positive. What could be wrong? Uh, except that that would lead to something kind of weird, which gives us this, and we have four bonds on oxygen, yeah, and no. This just doesn't work. And the reason is, why doesn't this work? I mean, even though we've got a negative charge on oxygen and a positive charge on this oxygen, why isn't that that this reaction works? This is not, not what happens, right? Well, it has to do with the fact, again, that formal charge is misleading. And the formal charge of this oxygen, we, we, we assign a positive charge to our oxygen based on formal charge. Remember, formal charge equals valence electrons minus unpaired electrons minus one half bonding electrons which in the case of oxygen is six minus two minus one half times six equals six minus five equals plus one. This doesn't actually tell us where the electrons are in the molecule. Why not? Because if you think about it, remember dipoles? Remember how electronegativity is, is like I said, kind of like greed for electrons in chemistry? Oxygen's electron electronegativity is way over here, 3.44. Hydrogen's electronegativity is way over on the left, 2.2. What this means is that this oxygen is going to be drawing electrons away from the hydrogen. So so oxygen, like we said, is 3.4, hydrogen is 2.2. So that's gonna mean that the oxygen's gonna be delta minus, it's gonna pull electrons from this bond away, sort of towards it from the hydrogen, and from this hydrogen too, and from this hydrogen too. So all these hydrogens are gonna be partially positive, this oxygen's gonna be partially negative. And when you think about it, this actually is a more accurate representation of where the electrons are in the molecule because oxygen is now actually, oxygen is actually electron rich. And this is worth writing out. Oxygen is actually electron rich, exclamation point. Which means now if you think about in terms of putting together negative charges with partial pos positive charges, this just tells you where the electrons really are now we have our oxygen, which is negatively charged, going to the hydrogen. And now this pair of electrons is going to go there. And that, when you think about it, makes a lot more sense. It makes a lot more sense because now we're actually getting somewhere. So that would give us HOOH and H. So now this is actually now... This is a proper acid base, the proper acid base reaction. Okay, so let's think about another example. This is not the only place in which formal charge can be misleading. Okay, so another example comes up a lot, uh, comes up especially in organic chemistry too. So when you think about, here's another example. We have, let's say we have an, an aldehyde like this. And we have BH4. BH4 and this aldehyde. Now, this BH4 has a negative charge, formal charge of minus one. Because boron has three valence electrons and it actually has four groups around it, so charge of minus one. And when you think about where the electrons are on our oxygen, they're there. And 
it thinks, it, you know, boron looks like it's, it's carrying the negative charge, but boron is not going to be actually forming this bond here. It's not a nucleophile. There's no lone pair on the boron. Instead, again, when you think about electronegativity, boron's got electronegativity about 2.0. Hydrogen's over here at 2.2. What does that mean? Well, it means that our hydrogens are actually going to have partial negative charges on them. So they're going to be more electron rich. And boron is actually going to be electron poor. So boron is actually electrophilic, more electrophilic here. And it's the hydrogens which are going to be nucleophilic. Okay, which means that when we think about where oxygen and carbon are, car oxygen's at, again, oxygen's at 3.4, carbon's at 2.5, so delta minus delta plus. So when we're drawing the arrows for this reaction, we can draw the arrows like this. And this would give us, actually, so now we'd have H, B, H, H. And what's gonna happen is this pair of electrons is going to form a bond with the carbon and we're going to have hydrogen and oxygen and we're going to have an extra lone pair on oxygen which wasn't there before negative charge okay so you get the idea you've gone from having a negatively charged boron to a negatively charged oxygen the hydrogen is nucleophilic even though we've got a negative charge on our boron so the, the bottom line if you will the bottom line is pay attention to dipoles more than formal charge. Because it's the dipoles that are gonna tell you where the electrons are much more than the, the formal charge will. If you just follow formal charge in this example, you'd think that oxygen was gonna accept the pair of electrons, which clearly it doesn't. So just keep this in mind. We're doing going through chemistry, just make, make sure that you understand how electronegativity differences, you can find good electronegativity tables everywhere, are gonna tell you about the polarity of a bond much more than, than the formal charge of an atom bond.